Hello to everyone. Hyperjewel here. Today, we're going to give you an overview of the scripting menu in Horizon World so you can publish your own interactive experiences for everyone to enjoy. In the process, I'm also going to show you how to make a bouncy ball with sound effects. Sounds like fun, right? Before we begin, I would suggest watching the Intro to Creation through the Intro to Gizmos tutorials, which can be found by clicking the Learn button in your Build menu. Scripting in Horizon Worlds may be different or new to many of you. The first thing we'll do is show you how to attach a script gizmo to an object. This is important because a script will only run when it is attached to an object, and that object will run its own copy of that script. In build mode, you can see I've already created this ball, and by selecting the objects, putting my right pointer into the selection, I can thumb stick to the left to create a grouping. We will use this ball as the object to attach our script to. Now bring up your build menu by pressing the menu button on your left controller. While the build menu is open, on the left hand side, click on the gizmos option and pull out the scripting gizmo. You can now close the build menu by pressing the button on your left controller once again. With your right controller, point to the hand icon at the ball until it is highlighted in a bounding box. Push up on the right bum stick to open the properties of the ball group. I find it's a good habit to name objects that I'm going to be attaching scripts to by selecting the top text field. We can call this grouping ball. Now, let's go ahead and open the property window for the script gizmo, also by pressing forward on our right bump stick, and let's give this one a name as well. I'm going to call this script ball control, lowercase b, uppercase c. Having the first word lowercase and the second capitalized is a naming style known as camel case. You can think of each capital going up and down like a camel's hump. How you name your script is a personal preference, but I like to stick to known naming conventions. And this makes it easier later on to know what these scripts are for as you accumulate more and more of them in your world. Now that I've named my script, I'm going to return to the properties window of the ball object I've created. At the very bottom of the property window, you'll notice there is a drop down arrow. Clicking once, you will now see the ball control script you have just created. All of the scripts in your world will appear here, so this is another good reason to make sure you keep your script and object names descriptive. Hooray! You've just made your first scripted object in Horizon Worlds. Of course, this ball doesn't do anything. It doesn't even bounce. But what if you wanted it to bounce? To make our ball object bounce, we first need to modify its properties. Before modifying, I'm going to stop the world. This is a good habit to get into, especially when scripting. To stop the world, from the build menu, on the lower bar, select the script icon to bring up your script console. Click on the stop button and notice that if we clicked it again, the world would start back up. Once the world is stopped, we can close our build menu for the moment and return to the properties window of the ball object. Under the Behavior tab, we can make the object interactive. We want the object to have physics and be grabbable by the player, so we are going to select the option Both for interaction. Scrolling further down, you can select what physics materials you would like to apply to the object. I'm going to choose Rubber Ball. Now, bring up your build menu once again and start the world. If we press forward and hold on our left thumbstick, notice the ray cast coming out of our hand. We can spawn into the world where you see the circle. You now have an interactive bouncy ball you can pick up, but it has no instructions yet. Let's head back into build mode and return to the script window of our ball control for a moment and see what's available to us. At the top, we have several tabs, and one of my favorites is Actions. This is where we can make stuff happen, like play sounds, visual effects, and so much more. But before we can do that, let's head to the first tab, which is the Events tab. This is where we define when something will happen and what events our object is going to respond to. Control code blocks are powerful for more complex scripting. As a brief introduction, if statements are logical blocks used within scripting. They're conditional statements that tell the object what to do based on the information provided. Basically, if something is true, do something. They're composed of two parts, if and then what happens, which is indented into the if block. You can also add an else if and else, which can handle additional situations as necessary. 
while is useful for instantly looping through various actions or calculations in a script, but it does have instruction count limits. Events define when something will occur in your world. You'll notice that your script gizmo starts with when world is started. Any code block you add under that event will happen at the start of the world. If we scroll down, we can see other types of events that we can bring over, like collision events. For example, when your object enters a trigger, collides with an object or player. In order to use a collision event, you will need to make sure that your object is set up correctly on its properties panel. Let's go back to our ball properties for a moment, but first I'm going to stop the world again. Looking back at the properties window, select the more tab for the ball. Click the drop down next to collision events from and select objects tagged. If we wanted to, for example, make the ball play a bounce sound each time it hits the floor, our ball script would need to know how to look for the floor. So we will tell the ball to register collision events from objects tagged floor. Please note you can only look for one tag, so if you want to also bounce on walls, consider a more generic tag like surface. Well, of course, now we need to make a floor. Okay, I've quickly placed a floor down, making sure it is level by using the snap tool on my left hand. Now, let's bring up the property windows for the floor. On the attributes tab, at the bottom, add the tag floor. And now our scripted object will receive collision events when it collides with the floor. With the world stop, let's bring up the script once more. Let's go ahead and delete the when world is started event by pointing our raycast and grabbing it by holding down on our index trigger. You'll now see options on your hand to duplicate and delete. Note that duplicating is a bit different in the script panel. See how when I'm holding the code block and thumb sticking to the right to duplicate, I can now use undo on my left hand. And in our case, select when world is started and pull down on my thumb stick to delete it. Now, on the right, under the Events tab, find the When Colliding with Object code block and drag it over to the left. If we head to the next tab, Motion, the code blocks available here can move a player or an object and manipulate them in different ways. Consider the Respawn Player code block. This can be used to create a teleport or respawn script, which is extremely important and help you keep your visitors oh! from falling out of your world. <laughs> I know it may seem silly, but there are countless ways that users may fall below your world, and this can break their experience or prevent them from recommending your world to others. Let's detour for a moment and illustrate this all-important script. For example, we want to pull out a trigger gizmo and stretch it out below our world. Then when the trigger is entered by a player, we will want to move the player to our world's spawn point. Pull out a new script gizmo. Let's open the script and name this one respawn player, lowercase r, uppercase p. We can also delete when world is started. Back on the trigger gizmo, we can open the properties panel. Notice that it is set up to detect players by default. If you change it to detect objects, you will have to provide the tag associated with that object, but our script is for players, so we won't have to worry about that. Now, at the bottom, we can attach the Respawn Player script, which you'll see now appears in the drop-down under Ball Control. If you have multiple scripts in your world, the newest one is always at the bottom. Back in our script, we'll head to the Variables tab. Click Create New Variable, call it Spawn, and select Object from the drop-down. Don't worry too much about this, as we will go over the Variables tab soon. All you need to know is that this spawn pill will allow us to reference another object, in our case the spawn point we want to teleport the player to. Let's jump over to the Events tab. Thinking back, when did we want the player to be respawned? That's right, when trigger is entered by player. You'll find this code block under Player Events. Now let's drag it over. Back on the Motion tab, grab Respawn Player and put that under our new event. On the Variables tab, Grab the spawn pill and drag it over to replace self. Notice how it highlights differently as you move your raycast around. Make sure to let go when the self pill is highlighted. Pro tip, if you have trouble, try thumb sticking to the right towards duplicate a few times. Then when you release the pill, it just disappears. The last thing you will need to do is duplicate the player reference from above in the empty player pill slot. 
To do this, simply grab the player reference, then drag it down over the player pill slot and thumbstick to the right to duplicate. That's it! We've finished the script! Now back on the properties panel of our trigger gizmo, you'll see there's an empty pill slot. This is how we reference other objects. Open the properties panel of the spawn point, and while we're here, let's name this world spawn, and then drag the world spawn pill from the bottom right over and into the empty pill slot of the trigger gizmo. Congratulations! Look at that! It works great! <laughs> Before we get back to our ball control script, I want to show you one more trick. Imagine we have a bounce house, but the only way to get in is via a tunnel. Let's bring out another trigger and spawn point and attach the respawn player script to the trigger. Don't forget to drag over the spawn pill. Also, on the spawn points property panel, we can turn off spawn at start. Selecting both of these, we can duplicate a copy and it retains the script and reference to the new spawn point. Note that if we just duplicated the trigger, it would continue referencing the previous spawn point. Let's name this new spawn point Bounce Spawn and set the gravity to 1.8. We can now place the spawn point in the bounce house and the trigger on the outside tunnel entrance, and vice versa with the other one. Trying it out, you can now see we have an awesome bouncing experience in our world. Let's head back to our ball control script. The Actions tab is what we need to be concerned with next. It's here that you can tell your object to do stuff with either itself or with other stuff. You'll see that these code blocks give you the ability to control a lot of different attributes with regards to your object and can also call out actions for other objects. Let's scroll down to sound and grab play sound, dropping it below the when colliding with object code block. You'll see that play sound automatically references self, and in this case, that refers to our ball that the script is attached to. The ball is not a sound, so telling it to play a sound on itself will just confuse it, and nothing will happen. <laughs> Instead, we need to tell the ball what sound to play. Remember the variables tab? This is where we created a reference to the spawn point earlier, but it goes much further than that. A variable is something in your script that may change, and something that you assign a value to. We need to create one so that the ball will know which sound to play when it hits the floor. That sound is an object variable as it is a reference to another object in our world. So let's go ahead and create a variable called bounce sound and choose the type object from the drop down menu and click create. Let's drag that bounce sound variable we just made over to the left and replace self with it. Now our script is essentially written. With that done, let's take a look at the other variable types we have available to us. Number, like 1, 2, 3, and this can also include decimals. There's the Boolean, which represents true or false, or you can think of as being on or off. Player, which can be used to reference a player in world. Vector and rotations, which are useful for determining location and direction in your world. Color. Horizon uses red, green, and blue values between 0 and 1, which combine to form millions of possible colors, or string. This can contain text that can be displayed on a text gizmo or a pop-up in your world. And you'll notice that each of these can have the list option turned on, which allows it to store multiple values. We won't be talking about this as it requires more advanced concepts and code blocks found on the Operators tab. Speaking of which, let's take a look at the last two tabs on our build menu, just so we are familiar with what code blocks are available to us there and what they do. On the Operators tab, we will find many various code blocks with endless possibilities. Don't feel like you need to understand all of them, but I encourage you to try new ones out all the time. Starting off, we have our logic code blocks. These allow us to return a true or false value, and they're typically used in if statements and other control events. Basic operations are your math essentials, under which we have more math code blocks and even advanced math code blocks. We also have some options to generate random numbers and get information about objects and players. You'll also find operators to modify colors and text strings. Here are many of the code blocks used for managing lists. There is even a code block to get data from a Raycast gizmo. One tab over we have values, where we can set script variables, player scores, as well as read and write player persistent variables. We even have value inputs. These are used when you need a single use value or when it doesn't change. 
I know it's a lot to take in, but if you take many baby steps, you'll be leaping like a giant in no time. Now let's look again at the property panels of our ball. Notice the empty reference for bounce sound. Let's head back to our build menu. On the sounds tab, you can scroll to look for a sound. You can also use the search bar. Once you find an appropriate sound, drag it out. Sports basketball bounce seems appropriate. To attach it to our ball, we can open up the properties panel of the sound and drag the reference pill to the empty pill slot on the properties panel of the ball. This is the moment of truth. Let's start the world and hooray! We have a bouncing sound when the ball hits the floor, but the sound doesn't come from the ball. To fix this, let's add the sound to the ball grouping. With the ball's property panel open, select the sound object and at the top of the ball's property panel, click the zoom in button and because you have the sound object selected, it has been brought into the group. Place it in the center of the ball, making sure to click once with your index trigger to let go of the object. And now when we click the zoom out button, the sound object is left inside the ball grouping. Please note that if you have an object selected when you zoom out, it will be removed from the group. Look at that! Now we have a bouncing ball with accurate sound coming from it. Great work! This is just a simple example of how we can connect one object to another and make something happen based on actions in the world. Thank you for joining me for this introduction to the scripting menu within Horizon Worlds. Now let's get out there and create some spectacular experiences and we'll see you out there soon. Hyperjewel out!